Oh, it's already getting hot. It is not even eight o'clock. So my kids uh, have left and I have a few minutes before work. So I thought I would take y'all on a garden tour. I had posted on my Instagram stories a few days ago asking if people wanted to do a garden tour and I had a lot of people say yes. And then I regretted it because <laughs> I realized, oh, I'm gonna have to show y'all my garden. <laughs> my garden is a kind of a mess right now. It's super hot. To me, it feels sort of normal that some plants would be struggling, but some plants are doing really well and then some plants are doing really, really not well. Um, but I said I would. So here we go. So this is it. This is my garden. It looks really, really nice from afar. Let's go take a look at what's going on. So I have a lemon tree. When I bought it, it was a Meyer lemon and then I accidentally left it out in a freeze. So it died, but then it started growing back. But then I have like a question mark next to it because with citrus trees, they do a lot of grafting. So I don't actually know if this is the Meyer lemon tree or if this is just the rootstock. We'll find out. Okay, this is Pepper Lane. So my peppers are actually starting to do well. I'm very proud. Um, <laughs> some of them are starting to do well. The plants, the peppers had kind of a slow start. They weren't doing super hot. And now it seems like they've established enough that they're happy and they're producing. Ooh, look at that red baby. I need to harvest that. That is gonna be delicious. Here's one of the plants that is going like gangbusters. My melons are loving whatever's happening. I was gonna do them all with vertical growing, uh, and then at some point I just like let it go and it's crazy. There's another one over here that's even crazier. Like I just, I'm just letting it happen. I'm letting it happen. It makes my husband crazy, but I like it. So I've got some cantaloupes here that are looking pretty good. I can't really tell, like when do you harvest a cantaloupe? I've got another one over here. I need to bag it up got Swiss chard that's just hanging out. I never harvest it. I never do anything to it and it just lives its life. Here is my winter squash section. Clearly some are doing better than others, but it seems to be, oh look, it's encroaching on my tomatoes. Ah, listen, you've got like a whole tomato cage to hang out on. Hang out there. Let's talk about my squash. I have squash all over the garden and that is because Squash vine borers, squash vine borers, squash vine borers, squash vine borers. Let's talk about squash vine borers. They're awful and I hate them. They start out as moths that lay their eggs on the leaves. And then what they do is the larva, they hatch they go into the stem and they go in and they like burrow into the middle of the stem and they just start eating their way up and they'll straight up murder a squash plant in a couple of days. Like they're really, really bad. And I have tried many ways to prevent them. I have tried spraying with BT regularly. Apparently I can't keep up with that. Uh, I've tried doing netting. I've tried uh, squash vine borer traps, which just uh, trapped a bunch of other pollinators. So I had to stop doing that because it felt bad. The only thing that works for me is continuous planting. So as soon as I see squash vine borer damage on one plant, I will plant another round somewhere else in the garden. I've got some bush beans over here. Um, they're not really doing much. They're just kind of vibing. The largest melon plant in the whole world. Ooh, that's got some mildew issues in here. I, I need to take care of that. Um, not putting on any melons, just about a million vines. I've got some tatsoi here that I need to harvest and replant. I've got these winged beans that are starting to grow. I'm really interested and I can show you guys later when they get to a point where I can harvest them because the photos make them look really cool. They're like, they're like long x-shaped beans i don't know i don't know how to explain it okay cucumbers 
or hot mess. <laughs> I have some pickling cucumbers that um, they tend to get away from me. Look at this guy. He is humongous. Oh my goodness. There are ants all over. Look at all those ants. What am I supposed to do with this plant? This is completely useless to me. <sighs> get off my hand completely useless to me. It is going to taste disgusting. This is just going to go in the compost. Uh, I'm going to throw it down here for right now. I've got this chili bikin pepper plant. Um, did I plant a chili bikin? No. Is it growing anyways? Does it grow every year? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. I've got some uh, pole shelling beans here. I need to... I'm going to come... I, I see a couple that I need to pick. So I just pulled them when they're dry i've got a bowl in the kitchen that i really need to get to at some point so okay let's talk about <laughs> let's talk about my tomato plants they're a mess did a few things wrong with my tomatoes um number one my soil is too sterile this raised bed is completely new and it takes a few years to get really good soil. And so for the first couple of years, you have to be really up on feeding it. And I did not keep up with that. So these guys did not get a lot of nutrients. So that's stress. That stresses out the plants. Number two, I was greedy because you're supposed to plant indeterminate tomato plants two feet apart. And I thought, oh, I'll just fudge it and I'll do a foot and a half apart and I'll just keep up on... Um, pruning because you really don't want tomato leaves like bushing up uh it is it is not good they need a lot of airflow with the leaves so that they don't get mildew which is what happened here or mold or any other kind of like diseases tomatoes are wimps um which leads me to uh mistake three i did not keep up with pruning i did not and so all of these guys got mold and mildew issues and they're just dying they're just dying right in front of me yeah if anybody tells you tomatoes are easy uh they're lying liars and also don't fudge the uh spacing recommendation so i've got some lavender back here it's still alive still hanging on um it's tired it looks <laughs> she looks tired um i've got parsley that looks like something has been eating it uh, i've got basil that it looks like some of these seeds are ready to harvest so I'll probably harvest them reseed this area and they might grow back same with my oregano I've got sage that's you know hanging on thyme dead plant dead plant and then we'll go look at my favorite part of the garden my favorite thing about sunflowers is that I get bumblebees. So this is my favorite part of the garden. When I come out and I look at the mess that is the rest of the garden, I just, I just go ahead and focus on this. It is the next day, clearly, because I can't film for more than 10 minutes at a time. Hey. Uh, and we're gonna do a seed inventory. So the fall season is coming up. I need my coffee. Fall gardening. So why is this a big deal? It's a huge deal in Texas because we basically have two big growing seasons. We have the spring and the fall. And actually the fall is, has historically been a more successful season for me. Like I'll always grow in the spring because the winter has just happened and I miss being in the garden. I get really excited. I plant things. But I know that it's going to get too hot for any sort of spring vegetables to really come into their own. So I hold off on a lot of those until the fall and then I do my best to overwinter them. A lot of the things that you saw in the garden that are not cute right now, um, this is my chance to replace them. And this is also my chance to buy seeds for when the weather drops and all of my summer plants come out and then we start doing our cool weather plants. So this is my seed organizer. Uh, when all of the gardening bloggers were using these uh, tape organizers, like cassette tape organizers. I definitely got onto that trend and I like it. It keeps things organized. Okay, so we're gonna start with beans. I am completely out of beans. I have an empty packet of Fairy Morse uh, Tender Green Improved Bush Beans and they were okay. 
I need to get some bush beans. And I need to get pole beans. So the difference between bush beans and pole beans is that bush beans are like, they sound, they make a bush. Um, and they're short and they don't require any kind of trellising or vining. And they put on a lot of beans and then they die. Pole beans are vine, vining plants. And so you need some kind of trellis or support, um, but they will put on beans until the plant dies due to weather or disease, but basically you can harvest beans as long as you want. So bush beans, you typically will plant in uh, phases and kind of just harvest them and plant new ones. Uh, pole beans, you only have to plant the ones. So we may go more heavy on pole beans because I did almost all bush beans this last season and I couldn't keep up with the planting. Beets. Okay, so I've got Baker Creek Bull's Blood beets and I've got Chioga beets. I think that should be fine. Um, I like to do a golden beet because they are sweet and wonderful and they don't stain your hands in your cutting board. So it's kind of nice. Broccoli and cauliflower. Uh, I forgot about this. I've got a mystery brassica here. So I know they're brassicas. That's about as much as I know. So I'll probably plant those just to see what happens. And then I've got Calabrese green sprouting broccoli. I like because it makes a lot of side shoots. I think I'm gonna run out, so. We do need more broccoli. I'll probably get cala another more, another more, an another calabrese, and then like one more, and I'll go see. I'll go do a fun one. I don't plant cauliflower because I don't have the space for it. They're pretty big plants, and they only make one head, and then they're done. They don't do side shoots the way the broccoli does. I don't have that kind of room in my garden. Cabbage, I love cabbage. I'm actually really happy with these cabbages and I probably will just get another one of this, a re-up. Um, so this is the uh, Tiara Market Fresh Cabbage. So it's called Market Green Cabbage, my bad, from Johnny Selected Seeds. They make these tiny little compact green cabbage. And in fact, maybe I might see if they have another one that's a red cabbage. Um, great for small families. The plants don't get too, too big. Um, but then this one, I'm probably gonna have to get more. This is Minuet. It is a hybrid Chinese cabbage. So uh, really similar to a Napa, but again, makes these smaller heads, smaller compact plants, really good for small gardens. Every season I order more carrots and then I don't plant them. So I've got these black nebula seeds. They're really nice. I've got these new Corota from Baker Creek. I don't know if I ever actually successfully grew these. I've got the Kyoto Red from Baker Creek. Again, like I have really bad luck with carrots. I don't do well with carrots. And then I've got these little finger carrots um, and they make very, very small carrots. I'm not as into those. So I'm probably gonna do a Danvers half long. So Danvers half long is a pretty standard carrot. I've got hybrid turnips. I tried planting turnips. It got too hot. They did not enjoy the weather. They did not do well. So I've got an Easter basket mix of radishes that I need to use up. I don't need any more radishes. I have so many radishes. I've got early scarlet globe radishes. I've got a hybrid daikon radish. I've got a Japanese daikon radish that ends up getting huge. I have the 18 days radish um, that never takes 18 days. It always takes so much longer. I don't, lying liars. I am gonna use these up before I get anything else. Cucumbers. I love cucumbers and actually fall cucumbers do so much better than spring and summer cucumbers. I've got this cucumelon. I've got it outside. I need to figure out when to harvest them. I didn't see one growing and it was like this big and it was rock hard. So 
I have enough of those. This is the Sumter Pickling Cucumber. I'm probably gonna get a different variety. I don't like these. And you know what? I'm gonna need another slicing cucumber because my Johnny Selected Seeds is almost out. Okay, well my phone ran out of battery. Um, and then I had to go to work. And now it's the end of the day. <laughs> this is just how my life is. Um, and I'm gonna keep going. Okay, eggplants. So I've got, I think this is fine. I honestly keep the eggplants that I've got growing because they look great. I'll probably just add a couple more. I've got a few of the Black Beauty eggplants uh, in the garden and they're doing great. Fantastic, love it. I wanna do a few more of these Chinese string um, for sort of long, those long eggplants that are good for stir fries and pickles and really just kind of better in, in Asian cooking than sort of the big globe eggplants. Uh, greens, a surprise Napa cabbage. Um, I think we're good on kale. I'm good on collards, I use the Johnny Selected Seeds Hybrid Collars. Um, Tatsoi, I'm great on. This is an amazing green, I love it. I love uh, harvesting it and stir frying it. Good on bok choy, boom. I think I'm good on, yes. I'm good on lettuces. So the lettuces that I like to do, well, okay, hang on, I've got, a whole jar of Bronze Beauty lettuce seeds that I saved from my garden this year. So happy about that. That's an heirloom. I've got a seed sample of Merlot. Um, and I do like these. I'm glad they sent me that uh, seed sample. I was going to get it anyways. And then I've got, as far as my Johnny selected seeds, I've got a Romaine. I'll grow a fair amount of that. And then I've got their Salanova series. I've got the Sweet Red Crisp, which is like a, a, a red curly leaf. Green Butter, which is a smooth leaf. Green Sweet Crisp. I may need more of those. I think I'm gonna put, I think I am gonna put that order in. And then Red Butter. Good to go. Spinach. Ooh, I'm gonna need a lot more spinach. Bloomstown Long Standing is really good because it's slow bolt, um, but I barely have any left. Got arugula, but like, I don't think I'm gonna do arugula this season because I'm the only person in my family that likes arugula. And like, I don't like arugula that much. Mizuna, good to go. And Feels like the Swiss chard is good to go, but I think I'm gonna do a little bit more. That was my big one. Herbs. I'm gonna do another planting of borage. I'm gonna do some more German chamomile. I feel like that's gonna do really well in the fall. I'm probably gonna grow some lemon balm. I've got some scallions that I need to go ahead and replant. I've got Thai basil that I need to replant. And I honestly, they've gone to seed and the seeds have dried out. So I'll probably just harvest those. Same with my Genevieve sweet basil. My sage is going strong. My mint is going strong. My parsley, I'm probably gonna regrow. Um, my dill, I'm definitely gonna regrow. Chives need to go in again. Thyme is still hanging in there. And then these Chinese chives, they're kind of, they're like flatter. You know how like chives are round and they're kind of hollow on the inside? These are flat and they're solid on the inside, so. Melons um, are, I'm okay with the melons that I've got. I've got a sugar baby watermelon and I've got an early girl watermelon. And I think these are fine. Okra. I've got two okra. They're, um, doing really, really well. I got these Jing orange okra. They are growing fantastically. And then I've got Clemson spineless okra. I'm probably like, I'm not gonna do them in the fall, but what I might do is I might go ahead and plant some 
Clemson okra now. I just realized I spelled spineless wrong. Peas. So I'm gonna have to order a lot more peas because there's gonna be a certain point when the temperature drops and I'm not really gonna be able to do um, tomatoes anymore or peppers. They're just gonna be tired and they're not gonna put on any fruit. It's just gonna be too cold. And that is the point when I am gonna take out all of the tomato plants and I will plant nothing but peas all along that trellis. And I'm gonna try and see if I can harvest all of my peas for the year. Peas, all of the peas. And then I've got these purple whole pink eye cow peas. I'm not, I also have like a giant jar of them for storage. So I'm not overly worried. Peppers, I will not be growing any new peppers in the fall because it's too darn hot. I am gonna wait until spring. Squash. So, we talked about squash vine borers. Uh, we talked about how much I hate them and how they destroy all my plants. Squash vine borer season is about to be out and so I am probably about to be drowning in zucchini so I need some yellow squash and I need a new butternut butternut squash okay and last but certainly not least is tomatoes I'm probably going to put some seedlings in containers now so that later when the temperatures go down they'll be kind of perfect um, I just want them to go down I want the temperatures to go down a little bit uh, you know, generally staying under 95 degrees, that's the perfect temperature for tomatoes, but I'm not gonna make the same mistake I did and plant a whole bunch of indeterminate tomatoes right next to each other. So like, I learned my lesson. So what I need to do is I need to put an order in for determinate tomatoes. So my thought is I could do a couple of series of plantings of the tomatoes, get big harvest, can them, have tomatoes for the year. Um, and then do it smaller in the fall with the, the replacement. Do smaller amounts of indeterminate tomatoes and focus more on cherry and big slicing globe tomatoes. That's my new plan. And we can talk about tomatoes because I love tomatoes. I've got a sweetheart cherry tomato, but looks like it's got a few left, sweetheart cherry. They're very cute, They're very little. Amish paste, I'm probably not gonna do that this fall. German, okay. We've got kind of my three fussies. So we've got Brandywine, Cherokee Purple, and German Pink. They are my fussier tomatoes. I think out of these two, I'm probably gonna go with Cherokee Purple and Brandywine. You know, Brandywine, it's kind of the top shelf of tomatoes. They're also like the hardest to keep happy, but they taste so good, it's worth it. And then Cherokee Purple to me is kind of my ride or die. Every season I grow, I grow her and she's good. I'm also going to do, um, I'm probably gonna get a hybrid tomato, like a Better Boy, where they're just grown to be productive and they just, they're always they're very dependable, you know? And maybe an early girl. I might get some early girl seeds because we have a small turnaround time. And yeah, this is my uh, this is my current seed inventory. I'm gonna put an order in for seeds. I mean, if you're interested, I could do a seed haul when they come in. It's gonna be really hard for me because that means I'm probably gonna have to resist opening the package uh, <laughs> until I can film, but I would do it for you. Anyways. This is my first video, so uh, welcome to my channel. Follow me if you want to see more misadventures in homesteading. All right, have a good one. Bye.